Will the US equity make a pause in the next few days? Well, let's review this straight line of the US market. First, by realizing what has happened in the last two months. Number one, as we can see on this chart of the New York Stock Exchange, we had the low in December, followed by a V-shaped rebound. This V-shaped rebound has been characterized by two important days. Number one, on the 26th of December. Number two, on the 4th of January, where both were 90% up day. That means there was a lot of participation, a lot of small and mid cap and large cap were bought on these two days. And that usually is a strong sign that a bottom is in. In addition, the way it has rebounded has confirmed the fact that probably it is a four-year cycle low or an important, very important major bottom. Then we have two other lines here. The green line, which represent the breadth of the market, accumulation distribution, and the unbalanced volume line, which represent the quantity of volume that we see on the lower side here of the chart. And what we notice is that these two lines are making new highs. Usually, when the breadth of the market is making new highs, that precede the new highs on the price side for the large cap indexes, in that case, the New York Stock Exchange or the S&P 500. So medium term, it is bullish, clearly. And this has been the case because, as we can see on this chart, where we have on the top the small cap and the bottom part we have the mid cap, we notice this red dotted line, which is the relative strength of small cap divided by the S&P 500, the large cap, or the mid cap divided by the S&P 500 uh, for the case of the mid cap here on the orange side. We notice that obviously during the decline, both sectors underperform the large cap. And now they have been rebounding strongly, so they outperform the large cap. So that means everybody was participating on this rebound, and this is a bullish sign medium term. Just short term, we notice that there is a little pause, and that's what we are going to discuss next. Of course, V-shaped bottom are not unseen. One example is what happened in 1998, we have here on the lower part of the chart, and what happened in 2018, right now, uh, currently with the last price of yesterday. What we notice is that it takes about two months where we have usually a relatively straight line rise without any pullbacks, sometimes a little bit more like it was in 1998. This year is particular. Uh, it has very short-term pullbacks, one or two days at most, and then it goes on to higher highs. So this is still bullish long-term. And that still shows that there is a big chance to revisit the highs at 29.40 on the S&P 500 that we had six months ago in September, at the end of September. And that's pushed us to change our view for the coming weeks. Instead of having possibly a major pullback along the green path, we have the impression that the violet path that we present here is probably more likely to happen in the coming weeks and months. Possibly a top could be made around 2800 or 2850. That's still open. We need really to see in the short term what's going to happen. And then a consolidation is expected for a few weeks, but higher highs are expected later on for the rest of the year. Higher lows as well. Short term, we notice here on these daily charts a few things. Number one, the dotted line, rising line, is the trend line, the obvious trend line that everybody is drawing. And it's just about to be tested currently. There are some obvious resistance around 2805, which are the highs that we see here in November and December. We notice also that the VIX in orange dotted line on the upper part of the charts here 
is coming down from the top that we had in December, on the 24th of December, all the way down to below 14%, just trying to move up a little bit around 15% in the last past few days. So here, most probably a sideways range or even a little bit a pullback toward 2740 or eventually 2700. Very short term, if we go into the hourly things, you notice that the hourly charts displayed here a cloud, the green cloud, which is still rising, so it's still a bullish trend. There is no really obvious sign of a confirmed reversal. In other words, we still need to wait for the pose to be confirmed. There are a few signs short term, and I expect that to be confirmed maybe by a retest and then a pullback to the 2700 area around mid-March or later March. We noticed obviously some bearish divergence, everything which just shows that the momentum might stop and be toppy right now. You, we notice also that the VIX has been able to rise out of its descending wedge. It could be a sign which we need to be confirmed in the next two days. Obviously, one of the main sectors remains technology, and that's why we look at the Nasdaq weekly chart, and we notice there also that we are coming close to very important resistance that we had in November and December. So it would make sense here that the market make a pause. What's happening in the rest of the world? Well, the rest of the world is first Europe. And Europe here, we have a few question marks. As we noticed here, the dotted black line is the relative strength of Euro stocks versus the S&P 500. So when this dotted line is going down, that means Europe is underperforming the US. Right now, it's trying to make a bottom and eventually try to increase in the last few two weeks. But that's not yet really an uptrend. It's probably just a pause in the downtrend. So when we look at the prices of where the euro stock is, we notice that it has retraced about 62% from the bottom to the top, a normal area of a pause, and we notice also that correspond to the former support here and the beginning of 2018. So again here, a strong suspicion that the market may oppose. What's about Japan? Japan is about in a similar situation. We notice here the dotted line of the relative strength of the Nikkei versus the S&P 500 is a little bit more positive than in Europe. It's rising a little bit more and since the beginning of February. But it's not yet really in an uptrend. We noticed also that the yen has been posing, coming down a little bit. And if suddenly the yen would stop moving down but move up, then it would be bad for the relative strengths of the Nikkei versus the S&P 500, and that would confirm also that we have here a pause and the resistance will cap the market around the level just below 2200, 22,000, which is basically 50% between the bottom and the top. We notice also that the oscillators on a weekly basis are overbought but have not yet crossed down. So we still need kind of a week of confirmation. Now, <clears throat> we noticed that uh, the yen could be rising. A yen could be rising, we'll go with a dollar coming down. So far, really, if we look at a daily basis, the dollar is still capped within a narrow range between 97 and 95.30, a range which eventually could try to push towards the bottom of its range. Uh, if US dollar index move a little bit down, that means maybe the yen might be moving up. We might get then the confirmation uh, that uh, the correction could go on. In other words, we should remember one thing, that usually the dollar correlates with weaker commodity indexes and weaker relative strength of emerging markets. And if the, the strong dollars 
instead of being strong, start to move down, that would be more bullish for US equity and that would help also uh, the relative strength of emerging markets. So here what we noticed is that maybe if there is a pause in the US equity market and this pause lasts a little bit too long, then a weaker dollar could be the way to save the soldier Ryan to save the US equity market by giving some fuel and adding some liquidity into the market by devaluing the currency, basically. So what happened to the other and the rest of the world, the one that we are speaking every day on TV, the one which is coming out of Asia, namely we are speaking China. And, and when we look at all the emerging markets, of course, here we notice that, or we recall that during 2018, we had a big downtrend here for all emerging markets. And since December, we have a kind of a rebound. It's not yet a full bull market. We are still below the cloud, the weekly clouds, and we are just touching it. But here we have a few question marks, and, and therefore we should differentiate about different markets. And I think what we should notice is two things. Number one, that the US 10-year yields are relatively flat, so that's not going to move too much. In other words, this is the famous new power put. Okay, here the Fed will be accommodative if growth slow too much. So that's the good news. The relative strength of emerging market has been making a pause in January, February during the strong rebound of the US equity market. And now it needs to be seen if also the emerging market could continue to outperform. That's still a question mark. We are not making a higher highs. So here, we should maybe differentiate. Yes, China has rebounded quite a lot, and we see the green line here is the value of the yuan, which is rising quite a lot. But look at what happens to India. It is still relatively weak on a relative strength also, and versus emerging markets. And, and therefore, maybe Brazil has been continuing to rise, but now in the last two, four weeks, it has been pausing. So here, also capped. And Russia, which also is a kind of a proxy also for the oil market, has been reaching resistances. Rebounds of the relative strength here, the green dotted line has been flattening kind of, a bit, bit down. And therefore, oil could be posing a little bit. So we know that not everything is rosy on the emerging market side. And therefore, it's all back to the US market if it will make a pause or not. And I will see you in a few weeks. Thank you for watching.